How do you raise your kids to be emotionally intelligent? Well, how emotions are made explains some simple things that you can do every day. Here's one example. Even before children can speak, you can look them straight in the eye, widen your eyes to grab their attention, and then use emotion words when you speak to them to describe your own experience and to label theirs. Research shows you're actually building brain connections in your child's head when you do this that will make them better students and better able to navigate the social world. Words are powerful. They affect the wiring of the brain for good and for bad. As your children get older, they will encounter bullying in school. Even name calling and other verbal bullying can have adverse measurable effects on the brain. If it goes on for long enough, it can cause neurons to die and brain regions to shrink. The result can be compromised immune system and illness. Obviously, this interferes with academic achievement. Sticks and stones may break your bones, but names can really hurt you. Most people believe that women are more emotional than men. Shelves of full of popular books portray this stereotype as a fact, but actually it's a myth. Women sometimes do move their faces more when they're experiencing emotion than men do, but women on average move their faces more in general um, than men do. It's not just when they're um, emotional. Even powerful women have to deal with gender stereotypes regarding emotion. So for example, Madeleine Albright, who was the first female US Secretary of State, had to work hard early in her career to keep her voice unemotional so she could be taken seriously. Supreme Court Justices Elena Kagan and Sonia Sotomayor encountered stereotyping during their confirmation hearings regarding whether they'd let their innate uh, emotionality steer their judgments towards too much empathy. Emotional stereotyping of women can be so subtle that even people who are aware of the stereotype don't notice when they're doing it. Studies show that women's facial movements are attributed to something personal about them, whereas the same movements by men are blamed on the situation. So for example, if we see a woman scowling and we see a man scowling, we assume that the woman is scowling because she's a bitch. And we assume that the man is scowling because, you know, something bad just happened in the environment and his scowl is reflecting his displeasure at the situation. Women are punished for being too emotional or not emotional enough. So women are punished for expressing anger that would be considered normal for a man. Um, for example, if a woman expresses anger, she's usually seen as out of control, as less effective, and she will be paid less, um, her yearly income will be lower than a man who expresses emotion in, in a similar way. When a woman is stereotyped, say she's the only female in a meeting and nobody is paying any attention to her words, which I can tell you actually does happen, she often can take one of two actions. She can stay quiet about it or, um, and then be ignored basically, or even worse, a man repeat her comments um, and then he gets the credit for them. Or she repeats herself probably louder or more stridently than she would otherwise. Um, and then she's seen as really pushy. In other words, she reacts to the stereotype but doesn't call it out. A more effective approach would just be to calmly point out the stereotyping. Physical health and mental health are not separable. It's very difficult to be emotionally healthy if you're not also taking into consideration your physical health. When people ask me, if, uh, what, you know, what are some basic things I can do to manage my emotional health better, my first question to them is, are you sleeping enough? Are, your, are you eating enough to get constant nutrition throughout the day? Are you getting up and moving your body occasionally? 
Are you exercising on a regular basis? At the risk of sounding like a mother, um, I can tell you as a neuroscientist that all of these things make it much easier for your brain to control your body. And your feelings come from the sensations in your body and how you make meaning of those sensations. But there's a lesson here, I think, for everyday life, and that lesson is you're, you, you will have much less distress if you, if you organize your life in such a way um, to maximize your physical health. So in much the same way as you might save money today for a rainy day in the future, making investments in your physical health today will have payoffs for your emotional health tomorrow.